This is the Zvezda M2A2 Bradley Fighting Vehicle Kit in 1100 scale. This is from Zvezda's Hot War Game, but is useful for other games in this scale as well. The US offerings in the Hot War series are variable. Their M1 Abrams is dreadful, worse than a child's toy. On the other hand, the M109 Howitzer is a great kit, and I have several of these for my British forces in Team Yankee. Today we'll get to see how the M2 Bradley kit fares. The Hot War miniatures range are priced higher than Zvezda's World War II offerings, for no real reason that I can see. This makes them less competitive against similar kits from other manufacturers. The lower price point is one of the key things that makes Zvezda's World War II kits an attractive option. An interesting point to note, the box art here doesn't match the kit. The box shows the M2 with the original pattern side skirts, while the actual kit is the M2A2 with later pattern skirts. This makes a big difference to the silhouette of the vehicle. If we look at the back of the box, there's a three-view picture of the completed unpainted kit. You can see the later pattern side skirts clearly here. The kit is 6.5 cm long and has 15 parts, including the game flag used in the Hot War game. The box notes the kit styrene is the slightly harder plastic Vesta shifted to that's easier to glue and paint. The kit also contains a decal sheet. This is pretty simple with just black tactical numbers and chevrons. Ironically, the name of the kit is misspelled on the sheet. Inside the box is also a card for the Hot War game and a one-page instruction leaflet. Instructions are pretty simple and clear. They should help you get this built. Let's look at the plastic. The kit comes on two sprues of beige plastic. Here's the first sprue with the suspension and tracks and the side skirts. You can see the kit parts look well formed and there is some good detail overall. Like all Svesta kits, this is a snap kit and the engineering reflects that. It has internal bracing pieces to support and hold the separate hull parts together. Tracks are single piece parts. This should make it easy to assemble. Track detail is simplified but the road wheels look good. Here are the side skirts. As mentioned before, these are the later, much taller side skirts of the M2A2. This was more commonly seen in the Gulf War in the 90s. Here's the second sprue. It has the turret parts and the upper and lower hull pieces. It also has the hull rear and the tow launcher. The turret has upper and lower parts. The gun and mantlet are moulded onto the turret, as are the hatches. This means none of the hatches can be modelled open. The lower turret piece has probably the most disappointing piece in this kit, the smoke dischargers. On the real vehicle, each discharger is a four-barrel launcher set at an angle pointing forwards. The kit has these pointing straight up. It looks rubbish. I plan to remove these. I'd rather not have them at all than see this travesty on the finished kit. The moulded-on gun barrel is in scale, which means it's very slender. Take care not to break this during assembly. The hull has some good engine grill detail and seems to capture the angular hull shape okay. There are some tools moulded on. These are maybe not as prominent as these details normally are on other manufacturers' kits, but should be able to be painted okay with a bit of care. So that's the kit parts. Apart from the dreadful turret smoke discharges, this looks okay. Detail seems fine, although it is simplified in places. This should build up into a nice wargaming kit for the table. Until Battlefront releases an M2 Bradley for Team Yankee, this is the only option in plastic at this scale. Let's look at some history. The M2 Bradley is an infantry fighting vehicle developed by the United States. It was designed to supplement and partially replace the M113 armoured personnel carrier. Adding a 25mm gun in the turret as well as mounting anti-tank missiles meant the Bradley was more a weapon system than just a battle taxi infantry transport. This increase in firepower and capability was in response to the Soviets fielding the BMP and adoption of IFVs by other countries. Bradley has a two-man turret equipped with an M242 25mm chain gun and a coaxial 7.62mm machine gun. The 25mm gun has a dual feed mechanism and can fire a variety of ammunition types. Anti-tank capability is provided by a twin tow launcher mounted in an extendable launcher on the side of the turret. The launcher can be reloaded through the large hatch on the rear deck. 
Initially, infantry were provided with weapon ports on the sides of the vehicle to enable them to fire small arms. However, to retain NBC integrity, these ports required special M16 variants that screwed into the ports. These were rarely used and the ports were plated over on later vehicles. As well as the three-man crew of commander, gunner and driver, Bradley transports a six-man infantry squad. This was increased to seven in the M2A2. Work on designing an infantry fighting vehicle started as early as 1958. Studies for the MICV-70 program continued through the 1960s, with a request for proposals issued in 1972. The XM-723 prototype from FMC was chosen. At this stage it was a 21-ton vehicle carrying eight infantrymen, a crew of three, and a one-man turret armed with a 20mm gun. In a protracted development process that eventually cost 5.6 billion US dollars, this design increased in weight and added the larger turret and tow missile launcher. Infantry capacity dropped to six men. The Bradley was approved for production in 1980, entering service in 1981. Bradley is an expensive and complex weapon system and there is much debate as to its effectiveness. This often centres around the reduced infantry capacity, armour protection and suitability of the overall design for assigned combat roles. However, the Bradley has worked well enough, seeing combat primarily in the Middle East. However, in the changed combat conditions in Afghanistan and Iraq, the Bradley proved vulnerable to improvised explosive devices, mines and RPGs. They've been largely replaced in those theatres by MRAP wheeled vehicles. These are more cost-effective and survivable options for these low-intensity conflicts. Bradleys have been upgraded and used for other roles like reconnaissance and AA vehicles. The M6 linebacker air defence variant replaces the tow at missile launcher with a four-tube launcher for Stinger AA missiles. A number of systems designed to replace the Bradley have been cancelled. This means Bradleys have received ERA armour packages, system upgrades and even an active protection system to extend their service life. Other than the US, Lebanon and Saudi Arabia are the only other operators of the Bradley. So that's the Zvezda M2A2 Bradley kit in 1-100 scale. It's certainly far better than their M1 Abrams kit. It builds up OK and looks like a Bradley. Removing the tragic smoke discharges helps. This is a wargaming piece and some parts like the headlight blocks are simplified. Surface detail is OK with some nice touches like the grab rails on the side skirts. But there are some parts like tools which would be better if they were moulded in stronger relief. Options are limited with no separate hatch parts, rear door or ability to mount the tow launcher in the raised position. I think when the Battlefront M2 Bradley kit is released for Team Yankee that will likely be a better kit. However, the Zvezda kit is available now, but given the hot war vehicles are more expensive than their World War II range, it's not really a lower cost option. If you need Bradleys right now, the Zvezda kit is okay, and it is your only option in plastic in this scale. But if you can afford to wait for the Battlefront kit, that might be a better option for a similar price. I'll be sure to grab one for review when they come out. <laughs>